out front, deep freeze. It's the talk for a lot of people in this country tonight. The sub-zero temperatures creating dangerous conditions for areas that have not felt the extreme chill in years. We got very spoiled here last year in New York. It was kind of springtime all winter. The cold now is blamed, though, for at least four deaths. It's very serious in this country, and it follows the warmest year on record. Some scientists are blaming global warming or climate change for these ups and downs, but the public doesn't seem so convinced. The number of people who believe in global warming is actually down 8 percentage points from 2008. Only 45% believe it is a man-made problem, which is down from 54% back in 2008. Out front tonight, Eric Erickson, editor of the conservative blog RedState.com, and John Avlon. Good to see you both. So, Eric, you know, the president in his inauguration speech took on those who don't believe in climate change. He made that choice to focus on it. Here he is. Some may still deny the overwhelming judgment of science, but none can avoid the devastating impact of raging fires and crippling drought and more powerful storms. Now, Eric, it, it sort of um, surprised me to look at the polls and see that fewer people, fewer and fewer people seem to believe this is a problem or a man-made problem. Maybe it was the Al Gore effect when it hit its peak or something like that. But um, it seemed like people would get worn down. Yeah, you know, it, it seems to me that the, the biggest problem that the global warming activists have is every time the conversation comes up, there's a, a snowstorm, and maybe if it was summer instead of the winter, uh, more people would buy into it. But r really, the biggest problem is that what does it matter? Let's say the president does do something with global warming. China and India aren't going to. Our emissions are down below what they were in 2005. India and China's are going up. So we could shut down production of everything tomorrow that causes greenhouse gases, and China and India aren't. And even if everyone did, the effects wouldn't take effect until about 100 years from now. So it seems like it's a problem we probably have to get used to as a problem as opposed to something we can cure. All right. That goes on for six minutes, by the way. That's CNN. CNN. Not Fox News. So, in a lot of ways, I actually find the conversation they were having there more detestable and more idiotic than even the stuff on Fox News. So why do I say that? Because Fox News is preaching to the choir. They're preaching to the craziest right-wingers in the country, right? CNN and Aaron Burnett have this veil of respectability, like they're straight shooters and that's real news. And I love the headline that Media Matters had on this. They said, Quote, instead of discussing scientific facts of climate change with scientists, CNN discussed opinion polls with Eric Erickson. <laughs> that absolutely nails it. And we just did a story the other day where from 1991 until 2012, somebody compiled all of the peer-reviewed studies on climate change. Only 0.17% said it's not happening. That means 99.8% of the peer-reviewed studies on climate change from 91 until 2012 say that it's happening, it's real, and it's man-made. And they looked at over 13,000 studies, man. And here's the thing, that's all that matters in the climate change discussion, right? So all this bullshit about the opinion polls, it's irrelevant. Who cares what Bob in Arkansas thinks? He's not an expert on the topic. It, it, you know, it's kind of like, just to give a, a little analogy here, it's kind of like saying, well, we did this opinion poll, and the American people think that we should overestimate the effects of credit default swaps by 37% to whatever, right? But I don't care what the American people think about credit default swaps. They don't know shit about credit default swaps. Just like, apparently, they don't know shit about climate change, at least in this poll, although I've seen other polls that uh, indicate the opposite. And then... Uh, Eric Erickson, I love, I love his idiocy. We're going to have to learn to deal with global warming. Hey, douchebag, that's not possible. That's the problem. When the fresh water runs out, when the sea levels rise, when the food chain gets fucked up, when extreme weather rises, it comes about every single year, you can't just deal with it. Runaway greenhouse, the runaway greenhouse effect can lead to mass extinctions. And then uh, the, the lead-in was great from, from Burnett. Uh... Oh, we, we, it's kind of cold outside now. Yeah, it's just, it's just super freeze taking over the country. That's a great lead in, Aaron. You know, that's not misleading at all. And do, do I really have to go into and explain, like I seem to do every day on the show, the difference between weather and climate? Weather is any particular weather event on a given day, right? So the weather for any day at any time could be way below the average temperature, right? But that's irrelevant. Weather is irrelevant. What matters is climate. 
Climate is when you compile all of the weather over a long amount of time and you see what the actual patterns are. I find it amazing. I mean, the, the argument's always so stupid from the right wing. Hey, at, on March 13th at uh, 10.42 a.m., it was kind of cold in uh, North Dakota. So, you know, global warming, haha, <laughs> we got you. Yeah, yeah, you got us. You sure did. And then the last thing on this, when Eric Erickson compares the U.S. to India and China, that argument is essentially like saying, well, look, I could stop robbing all of these stores, but my friends here are going to keep robbing these stores, so why should I stop robbing these stores? Is that an argument, really? Is it?